Hello, it's Mark here from Excel Off The Grid. In this video, I want to show you a way that we can reference items within Power Query using their position. We'll look at this in two ways and it'll help us solve a common problem. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here in Power Query, I have a trial balance report loaded. If you're an accountant, you'll know what this means. If you're not, then don't worry about it. We're really concerned about the data transformations. But anyway, the key thing that we want to do is to tidy up this data so we can use it for our other reporting. Now, one of the key things that we need is this date. This is the date at which this report is valid. And you can see it here in column one and row three. So as at the 31st of January, 2021. And we want to get this out into a separate column, but then also have that column called month end date. So let's have a look at how we can do this. Now, before we do anything, we need to find out the name of our previous step. If we come across into our applied steps window, you can see it says navigation, but that's not really the name of our previous step as Power Query thinks about it. So if you ever see navigation and you want to use the name of that step, the best thing you can do is to come up to view, advanced editor, and within there, I can see that it's actually called TB underscore sheet. So I'm just going to copy that and then click done. Right, now time for us to make the transformations. So I want to add a column, add a custom column, and I'm just gonna call this month end date. We will need to change this again later, but for now it will help us remember what this step is actually for. So every value in this column, I wanted to say as at 31 January, 2021. So it equals, I'm going to put a hash and then double quotes. And in those double quotes, I'm going to paste the name of the step, the previous step in the advanced editor. I'll open a square bracket and it already lists all the column numbers that I have. So the value I want is in column one. Then I'm going to enter an opening curly bracket. Now I want the item from row three, as we can see here, but because Power Query starts counting from zero, that means I actually need to enter a two. I'll close that curly bracket, then come down and just click OK. Perfect, that has now added that value into every one of my rows. Now it's not a valid date format yet, so let's fix that. I'll come to the Transform tab and come to Extract and I want to extract everything after a delimiter. And the delimiter that we're using is as space at space. I'll then click OK. Right, we now have all of those as dates, which is perfect. And let's change that to a date data type. Fantastic. But we now need to sort out all of our other remaining columns. So let's come and clean up this data. So from the home tab, I want to remove rows. I want to remove the top rows and I want to remove the top four rows and then I'll click OK. So now we have an issue because once I click promote headers, it will take this value of the 31st of January 2021 and it will push it up into my header which the next time I run this report, let's say it's the 28th of February or the 31st of March, that means that this query is likely to break. But we're going to fix that by again, looking at the position of an item. So from the transform ribbon, I'm going to click use first row as headers. I'm then going to rename this column once again to be month and date. You'll see in the formula bar that we had the 31st of January 2021 was hard coded is as that value. Instead, let's refer to that column in the previous step by its position. So for that, I'm going to use the table dot column names function and open a bracket. Now it's, it asks me what table do I want the column names from? Well, I want the table that existed at the end of the previous step. So I'll type hash, and then in double quotes, I want the promoted header step. 
And which column do I want to reference? Well, here you can see it's the fourth column. But again, because Power Query starts counting from zero, that means I actually want column three. And that's in curly brackets. Right, I'll press return on that. And it's accepted that without any problems. So now let me just change my data types of my other columns. So my account code should be text. My account should be text and my value can be a currency number. Okay, now it means that if we want to, we can close and load this query back into Excel. But before we do that, let's just have a look at the advanced editor. So here's the code that we've used. And you'll notice at no point in this code have we referenced the 31st of January, 2021, which means that if we were to refresh this query with new data in the next month, that this query will still function correctly and won't break by the fact that we have a new column header. So that's it for this video. We've looked at two ways that we can reference items by their position. We've looked at how we can reference an item with inside a column. And we've also looked at how we can reference an item uh, with inside the column names transformation. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.